It's time for Drive-By Pneumatology with Tim Challis and Todd Friel. It's nuts and bolts time. Welcome to Lecture 31 of Drive-By Pneumatology. How exactly should you and I go about the business of making decisions, small or large? Here is Tim Challis with a how-to on decision-making. Really practically, how do we make decisions then that honor God? That's what I want to look at at the final point then. When it comes right down to one of those big decisions, I said at the beginning, just think of a decision you're up against. When it comes to actually choosing left or right, door A or door B, whatever it is, how can you know that you're making a decision that honors God? Let me give you three questions you can ask in those times. Three questions that will give you confidence that you are doing God's will for your life. Number one, what does the Bible say about it? a rather obvious question, but it's one we way too often just overlook. What does the Bible say about this thing? Is there a passage in the Bible that speaks directly to this issue? Or is there a principle in the Bible that applies to it? We need to look to the Bible because that's where we hear God's voice. It's where God speaks to us. You think of 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So teaching, reproof, correction, training. When you're making a decision, isn't that exactly what you want God to do? You've got to make that decision. Don't you want God to teach you and reprove you and correct you and train you? That's exactly what God promises to do in his word. Feelings can't do all of that. Circumstances can't do all of those things. Can your circumstances teach and reprove and correct and train in righteousness? No. God's word does that. God doesn't tell us to look to feelings or circumstances. He just says, look to the word. So when you're facing one of those decisions, you absolutely need to search the scriptures and to ask others to help you search the scriptures. Pray that the Holy Spirit will illumine them, that he'll help you understand exactly what they mean. It's a great time to talk to a pastor or a mentor or some other person to help you as you search out God's will. They may have a greater knowledge of the Bible that they can bring to bear and say, no, the Bible speaks very clearly to this issue. And what you're especially looking for is one of two things, a clear command that you must do something or a clear command that you must not do do something. The Bible speaks directly to an issue you've got to obey. You've got to obey right now. When God speaks, you listen and you obey. And you can then listen and obey with full confidence. If you're thinking of marrying someone who's not a Christian, the Bible tells you no. The Bible says you absolutely may not marry him, period. So now you're called to obey God, and you can obey him with joy and confidence that you've done what's right. You've now done the will of God. The only alternative, of course, is to be disobedient. You're thinking, you know, maybe I should start giving some of my money to the local church. Maybe that would be a good thing to do, to take some of the money the Lord's given me and give it to the church. Well, you'll find God saying very, very clearly, yes. You need to do that. That is my will for you, that you give generously to my work. So you need to obey. You need to obey right now. The only alternative, not giving, is disobedience. Look to the Bible. This has to be your practice as a Christian. When making a decision, that's the first question and the most important one of all. What does God say in his word? Does he explicitly command or explicitly forbid? But of course, as we know, not every question has a very simple, very easy yes or no answer. Should I dedicate time every week to meeting with a local church? Yes, absolutely. The Bible speaks clearly. Should I go to university or should I just get started on my career? Well, the Bible won't speak to that one with the same clarity. Not every question immediately brings us that yes or that no. And for that reason, we've got other questions we need to ask. But before we can ask those questions, we need to see that there's a difference here. We're about to cross a line. We're crossing a line of freedom, 
okay? Where God speaks a clear yes or a clear no. We have no moral freedom to obey or disobey and still be honoring God. We must obey God right away. But on those issues where God does not give that clear yes or no, that clear obedience or disobedience, well, now we have freedom from God. God gives us freedom to do these things. Does God want me to begin a career, or does God want me to go on to college and to work toward a degree? I will not find a clear yes or a clear no in the Bible. And what this means is that I now have freedom to decide. God simply doesn't have clear commands for every area of life. Instead, what he's done is he's structured our relationship to him in such a way that we have freedom to make choices. And not just any choices, but choices that God will honor, that God will support, that God won't punish. So once we've gotten then past what God commands and what God forbids in the Bible, we get to choose And we get to experience God's blessing. It's a choice between good and good, or maybe a choice between better or best, but it's no longer a choice between good or bad, between doing the will of God and not doing the will of God. So, Two more questions will help us there. Question number two, what is the wisest choice? What is the choice that will be wisest? Which one is the most spiritually profitable Which one seems to offer the greatest opportunities? This is a time where now you can use your God-given, spirit-filled mind to think through the issues and to choose which one of the two is the wisest. Well, can I afford to go to school? Or will that now just saddle me with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt that I'll really never be able to pay off? Or has the Lord given me? He's given me exceptional intellectual gifts. Should I use those and go off to college and train How will I best be able to serve my brothers and sisters in the Lord? What will equip me to be a good husband, a good father? These are questions that help us understand what the wisest course may be. And remember, you're not deciding between good and bad, but between better and best. How can you best use the gifts and the opportunities that God has given you? Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what the will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. God is renewing your mind day by day. As you go to his word, as you hear the word preached, God is renewing your mind every day so you can have his wisdom and so you can do what is good and what is acceptable and what is perfect before him. You see the freedom this brings us now. So many people teach and so many people believe that if you make the wrong decision, well, now you've stepped outside God's will for your life. If you don't heed the circumstances, if you don't understand the feelings right, if you, if you don't listen to those impressions and do the right thing, then you'll no longer be in the center of God's will or something like that. That is nonsense. You need to free yourself from that kind of thinking. If you are not disobeying God's revealed will, if you are not directly disobeying the Bible, then you are in God's will. Then you're doing what God wills for you. And God has given you a brain for a reason. He's given you desires for a reason. He's made you different from the person beside you for a reason. He's given you freedom to choose what you should do. And he's a loving father who will support you Either way, would you as a father, if your son chose college in place of career, would you now hate him? Would you now try and turn circumstances against him to punish him? Of course you wouldn't. Why do we treat God as a worse father than a human father? So be wise. Use your mind. Use the Bible. Use the cumulative wisdom of the people that the Lord has given you in your life and make decisions that reflect a well-trained and a spirit-led, a wise mind. And of course, after thinking through the wisdom of a decision, well, maybe you find that still hasn't answered the question. You look to the Bible, and you pray, and you talk to friends, and you look for for counsel from your pastor, and at the end of it all, it doesn't seem like one would be wise and the other would be unwise. So then what do you do? That's question number three, and it's this. What do I want to do? Isn't it amazing that we get to ask this one? What do you want to do? 
What desires has God given you? What makes you happy? What brings you joy? What excites you? Just find that thing and go and do it. If that's then applying for university, go for it and do it for God's glory. God will be with you every step of the way. You'll be doing God's will. You will have found God's will. You see then where this has taken us. God gives us his moral will. He gives us his revealed will in the Bible. And this is where he tells us what we must do and what we must not do. He tells us what we must do to please him and what we must not do that displeases him. But the rest of God's will can only be found by doing it. Does God want you to go to university or does God want you to get a job? Yes. Yes, either one. Be wise. Do what you love and you're doing God's will. Do it with all of your heart and soul and strength and mind. And you'll now be doing God's will for your life. And God will be right there with you, blessing you and loving you and pleased with you because that's who he is. That's how you do his will. God has made his will for us clear. And then within that will, there's this whole world of freedom. And it's that kind of freedom that allows you and me to live very, very different lives, and yet both of us to live in a way that honors God. It's freedom then to express our faith in very different ways, to be very different people in very different fields with very different interests. And both of us, both of us can live with complete freedom, complete confidence, knowing that God is with us that God is pleased with us, he's thrilled with us, that we're doing his will. And really, Christian, this is far, far better. Let's be careful. Uh, We're often pretty imprecise in our language, imprecise with the way we talk about these things. So let's be careful when we say, God told me to do this. God will tell you all kinds of things, but he won't tell you what car to buy or what girl to marry or what job you should apply for. He wants you to make that decision. And he wants you to make that decision with the mind he's given you, with the wisdom he's given you. And he wants you to make that decision and then get out and do it for his glory. So you can do it for him. You can do it confidently. You can do it boldly. And you can do it with full assurance that he will be right there with you as you do it. Ah, now isn't that a relief? Knowing that you are always, as a Christian, in God's will, and that you can know how to make wise, godly decisions by simply studying his word. Doesn't that take a lot of pressure off? Knowing that you haven't missed God's sign, that you haven't somehow been able to get into the hidden knowledge of God to know what you're supposed to do. You can know what you're supposed to do if you read the Bible. Now, maybe you're like me and you're thinking, whew, that's a horrifying thought. You're like me and you think, okay, I just I just like it. Bing, 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 bing. Here are five things that you can remember when it comes to decision making. And if you start applying these five things, I'm telling you, decision making, it'll you won't have to sit there and go one, two, point three, point four. It'll just start to happen more and more naturally for you. But here are the five things that I think you should remember when it comes to decision-making. Number one, pray for wisdom. Please note, I said pray for wisdom. Not that God would put a billboard up for you telling you which dog you're supposed to adopt. Pray for wisdom. Lord, please grant me wisdom. Please help me to apply the Bible. Please help me to receive godly counsel. Please help me to not act selfishly. Please grant me wisdom to make the best dog decision that I can make. Now, that is a radically different prayer than, Oh, Lord, please reveal to me who I'm supposed to adopt. Would it be who or what? Please give me a sign. No, don't pray like that. Pray for wisdom. Number two, read your Bible. What does it say about doggy adoption? What does it teach me about pet ownership? What does the Bible have to say about animals? What does it say about stewardship? What does it say about families? Take into consideration all of those issues in the decision-making process. So you pray for wisdom, read your Bible on your subject. Number three, receive godly counsel. Talk to wise men and women best if they know you 
and ask them their opinion. Hey, what would you say about us adopting a St. Bernard? What would you, what do you think about it? And receive that and receive it like a Proverbs man, not shunning it, not go, well, they don't know what they're talking about. Actually receive it. Don't have a preconceived answer. And you're just going to do a little hat tip to that number three bullet point that Friel mentioned. No, receive godly counsel. Number four, consider your preferences. Do you like St. Bernard's? Do you like miniature schnauzers? Now, clearly, miniature schnauzers are better. But the point is, just what do you like better? Which dog do you prefer? Preferences. It is okay for you to have preferences. Consider your preferences. And then number five, make a decision. And that is God's will for your life. So let's say you did all four of those things. You prayed for wisdom. You read your Bible about St. Bernard's, you received godly counsel, you consider your preferences, and you went ahead and you bought the St. Bernard, and that dog is a big, drooling, slobbering nightmare, and he makes a mess of everything. Are you out of God's will? No, you're in God's will. How do I know? Because you wouldn't have a St. Bernard if God didn't design for you to have a St. Bernard. Now, you could have made a sinful decision. You could have made, in a sense, the wrong decision, but in another sense... No decision that you make is wrong that puts you outside of God's will. So remember those five things. Seek God's will through his word, through godly counsel. Consider your preferences, pray for wisdom, and then make a decision. And that is God's will for your life. And that was Lecture 31 of Try by.